good day. I had a couple of questions on the ability to uh, shape the uh, uh, Project 13 and throw parametric dimensions on it. So I figured I'd do a quick uh, tutorial on uh, how to utilize circles and fillets and so forth. So, you know, ultimately you start with a rectangle. That's the goal. And then you trim away what you don't need and then add the fillets. And uh, so at this point I've added the circles and the, uh, the rectangle. And so you just trim away what you don't want, which are the internal components. And then you add a fillet. And you right mouse click and put a radius on the fillet. And three quarters of an inch here is fine. And we'll throw the fillet on here. Make sure you check your dimensions so that way it's all oriented properly. And then we'll add the circle in the center of the object. And so then it comes down to parametric dimensioning. And the idea is how do you parametrically dimension or what is that? And so the idea behind parametrics is that we can do uh, and apply dimensions via typed input to resize AutoCAD drawing components. And that's the advantage of the parametrics. So if you have objects that you know that might scale up or scale down or change dimensions or you know as you're developing uh, the objects, uh, parametrics work out well. So for example, linear dimensions with parametrics, we can go from the center of the circle to the center of the circle. And you notice that you got the giant X and that giant X indicates those are going to be the parametric points. And so it comes up and says it's 16.49, but what if we really wanted 17? So we could actually change this and change the value in D1 to 17 and hit the enter key and it literally will move the objects. So you saw it move the, the circle because the circle wasn't tied to the object. So now we need to uh, tie the circles to the locations and the objects. Well, that's a matter of objects, uh, of putting um, constraints onto these particular items. Like, for example, concentric. So we can use the concentric constraint and say that the outer arc and the inner are exactly the same, and we have to do it to both sides. So once we do that to both sides, then it's going to continue to break different things. And again, it's not that critical um, on breaking things. The key is, is that if you don't want things to break, start from the inside and work your way outside, and as opposed to starting with the outside and working inside. So if you don't want anything to break, then you can undo what you've done and start with the inside rectangle, starting with linear dimensions, on the square objects and then continue to build it. But in this case, if things continue to break, then what you have to do is the coincident points are the points where the objects meet. So we want the coincident point of this to meet with this. Okay. And we want the coincident point to meet with the other one. So we can continue to, to pick these coincident points and all you're doing is connecting the objects. That's all you're doing here, is connecting the endpoints of each of the entities all the way along. And right now, the endpoints, okay, are getting all set up and they're all connecting up. And so things don't look like exactly the way that they should, right? You know, this side's bigger, that side's smaller. And so then what you can do is add more dimensions. As you add more dimensions, it stabilizes the drawing. We can also add things like tangent, okay, because we know that this arc and this arc is tangent, and th these two arcs are tangent, and these two arcs are tangent, and these two arcs are tangent. So now that everything is tangent, and oops, and this arc and the line is tangent,
So that's important. Notice that it moved that line in to, to key that tangency. And so now, as we hold these geometric constraints down to, to ensure that everything is locked in place, what we can do is now add additional dimensions. Like we know that this radius is 0.75, and this radius is 0.75. And so you're repeating the radii and ensuring that, you know, again, I always start with the smallest dimensions instead of the biggest ones. But I did the big one to show you that it, that you'll break it, um, that your drawings will break. And all you have to do is just keep adding your data points, starting with your constraints, to um, lock it into place. Uh, and then we can continue with our... radii here on the outside. This one's 1.3. It's interesting. We'll see what this one is. This one's going to be bigger. 1.8. So if we wanted these both 1.5 and you just double click on them. You can highlight the text and type in 1.5. And it updates it. See how it kind of, you know, just kind of updated it and cleaned it up. Now things aren't straight. They're not level. This line's now at a crooked distance. But again, as I said, the best way to start is with the interior. So you start with this interior. Or actually linear from these endpoints here. So you always start from the endpoints. To build it. And again, your dimension placements, you can always move them afterward. But you always key on the endpoints. So now that this is locked down in square, we can say that uh, we want parallel. So we want this and this to be parallel. And we want the verticals to be parallel. And so you can add these geometric constraints instead of dimensions. And so it just makes it a little bit easier to, to line everything up. Alright, so you can see the bottom is still broken because I didn't put the, the endpoint connectivity on these. So we can still now connect the endpoints of these. So now all the endpoints are connected and this is basically stable overall. And so as we, we can then add additional linear dimensions. And if we want this to be 2.0, that'll shrink that up. Then we can do the same thing here. Make this 2.0. And so you can see how you build it. So you use the geometric tools, you use dimensions, and you build your parametric design. Have a great day, and we'll be talking to you soon.